Hey guys, welcome back to our uh, second demo video uh, dealing with chapter 15. And in this video, I'm going to go over exercise, or I'm sorry, problem 15-3B. Okay, this one's actually super easy. Okay, and in fact, um, a lot of what they're asking for um, or asking us to do, we've done in the previous video. Uh, so I'll go through it again, not a problem. Uh, again, the B problems are in Blackboard. They are posted. I uh, strongly encourage you to uh, have those open as we're going over this. Um, so problem 15-3B, uh, they give us some information, right? And it starts off with, hey, here is the balance sheet for um, Lions Corporation as of December 31st, 2015. The current liabilities, we have one. It's the interest payable. It has a value of $96,000. Then we have the long-term liabilities. And we have a bond payable, 8% due January 1st, 2020. And they tell us that interest is uh, payable annually on January 1st. And the bonds are callable on the annual uh, annual interest date. So the first thing we need to do uh, for part A, A is to journal the payment of the bond interest on January 1st, 2016. Super easy, right? Why is it easy? We don't have to calculate anything. They just give us the give us the amount and say do the journal entry, pay this this liability. Okay, no problem. So January 1, 2016. Sorry about that, 2016. So the journal entry that we need to do um, is to debit first interest payable for the amount of $96,000. And we need to credit cash. Again, for the same amount, $96,000 thousand dollars super easy right now the next one uh, B says assume that on January 1st 2016 after making that interest payment Lions Corporation calls the bonds right those bonds have a face value of three hundred thousand dollars now the call price is a hundred and eight percent of the face amount we need to record the redemption of the bonds so easy for us to do. It really is, right? And we, we, we saw this uh, in, 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 in the prior video. So what date do we have here? Well, this is part B of that problem, and it's January 1 of uh, 2016, I believe. I believe it said. Yep, 2000. I apologize. Bear with me. Lost some. Ah, 2016. Yeah. So, or er, yeah, 2016. So it's going to be the same year. And what we need to do is we need to recognize, okay, what are we doing here, right? Well, it's pretty simple, right? We're calling that bond, okay? So what's the journal entry that we need to do? Well, we need to get rid of our bonds payable, right? They tell us that the face amount of the bond is $300,000, okay? Now, I know for a fact I'm going to have a loss on this redemption. How do I know that? Because I'm paying a hundred, I'm paying out cash, a hundred and eight percent of the face value. So that means since we have a loss, I need to debit loss on bond. Oh, sorry, loss on bond redemption. Okay, I'm going to come back and calculate that late. Oh, sorry. I'm going to come back and calculate that later. Okay, I want to calculate first what's the cash. Right? What's the cash payment? Well, that's easy. The cash payment is three hundred thousand dollars times one point oh eight, or eight percent of that. Right? We end up with three hundred and twenty-four thousand dollars cash we're paying out to 
redeem this bond. We have a loss of $24,000, okay? Now let's look at C. C says, um, <clears throat> C says, prepare the adjusting entry, um, the adjusting entry on December 31st, 2018 to accrue the interest on the remaining bonds, okay? Well, you might be saying, well, wait a minute, we called a bond. Well, true, we did. But if you look at the problem, it says that the bond's payable account is 8% due January 1st, 2020. The total balance is $500,000, okay? So we didn't call the entire bond, right? We called a portion of the bond, okay? And that portion of the bond that we just called was the I'm sorry. The bond is one point uh, one point two million dollars, right? We didn't call the whole thing, okay? We didn't. We only called three hundred thousand of of the bond, okay? So what's the journal entry that we need to do? Well, the journal entry we need to do is is pretty pretty simple, right? What we need to do is we need to show that how much do we have left of this bond? Well, we had one point two million dollars worth of bonds payable. We called in three hundred thousand of it. That must mean that nine hundred thousand of it is still outstanding. So I need to record the interest as of. December 31, uh, 2016, okay? So we already know automatically right off the bat what our journal entry is, right? We need to have interest expense and we need to credit interest payable, right? For how much? Well, let's think about it. How much do we have outstanding? $900,000 of the bond is still outstanding. That's the face amount that's outstanding. Times the stated interest rate. Well, the, the, um, the problem says that the stated interest rate um, on those bonds is 8%. Okay, so I'm just going to multiply that by my 8%. So what's the value or the the the, the the dollar amount of the journal entry, well, it's $72,000. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the next problem that you have to do is problem um, B. Okay. Um, I'm going to just run right in. We're just going to do that problem right now. The reason why, problem 15-3A literally took us like two minutes. Okay. So, Let's look at um, problem 15-4B. Okay, what's going on here? Well, what's going on here is uh, Cressetti Electronics issues $800,000, 8% 10 year mortgage note on December 31st, 2015 to help finance a plan expansion, right? So they sign a note because they want to expand the plant. Well, guess what the collateral is? probably the plant, right? The term of the note provide for annual installment payments um, that include or that that is that is um, exclusive of real estate taxes and insurance. But the payment amount they tell us is $119,224. Okay, payments are due December 31st. Part A says we need to Prepare an installment state uh, an installment payment schedule for the first four years. That's not a problem. That's easy for us to do. Why? Because we already saw it, right? And bear with me here for one second. I just want to fix this to make it look a little better. There we go. Okay. So this is going to be problem 15-4B. And what I need to do for part A, 
I need to create my schedule. Well, that's easy. That's really easy. Why? Because we already saw it once, right? We already saw the PowerPoints. The first thing I need to do is determine what my annual interest period is. Bear with me here, sorry. Okay, annual interest period, I got that. So we have to do four years, right? We have the issue date. We have the first four years, one, two, three, four. Okay, the next thing I need to do is put in my, let me come down here a little bit, my cash payment. Well, that's easy. The problem gives us what the cash payment is. And we know that the cash payment is going to be $119,224. That's the same amount over the life of the loan, right? We only have to do four years, so that's okay. Next, we need to calculate the interest expense, which is very easy for us to do. Okay. Next, we need to calculate what the reduction in principal is. And then finally, we need the principal balance. Okay, so on the issue date, we know that the balance that we borrow um, or the note that we sign is for $800,000. Okay, we know that the interest rate, I'm just going to put it up here, is 0.08 or 8%. Okay. So on the first payment, we need to determine how much of this payment is going to be interest, how much of it is going to reduce the capital or the principal balance, and then what the principal balance is going to be after this payment. So the first payment we make, I need to pay 8% interest on the, ba on the principal balance, which is $800,000. Times 8% should be $64,000, which it is. I need to figure out what is the reduction in principal. Very easy. I just subtract the cash payment, or I subtract um, the interest expense from that cash payment, and I see that the reduction in principal is $55,224. So what is the principal balance that I owe? Well, it's going to be the $800,000 minus the reduction in principal from the first payment. I now have a new carrying balance or a new principal balance of 744,776 bucks. Got to do the same thing for the second um, issue or the second interest period, right? Very easy to do. What is my balance as of this uh, second interest payment? Well, it's 744,776 bucks. I multiply that by my 8%. That gives me, I'm going to round here. I'm going to get rid of those cents because we don't need them. Uh, $59,582. Okay. Of this payment, how much of that reduces the principal balance? Well, I take my $119,224 uh, payment that I make minus the interest. I get $59,624. Or, I'm sorry. $59,642. That is the amount that my previous principal balance is going to decline by. So I take the previous principal balance before I make the second payment minus the, redu oh, minus the reduction 
in principle from the second payment, I get 685, 134. I'm going to do the same thing for payment three. What's my principal balance as of the third payment? Well, it's the $685,134 times my interest, 8%. Um, again, I'm going to round here. So we have $54,811 is interest. Okay, how much of this payment then? will reduce the principal balance. Well, take the payment, subtract out the interest expense that we just calculated. My balance after this payment is going to be reduced by that $64,413, which ends up being 620,500 or I'm sorry, $620,721. Now we have to do the same exact thing we just did for um, our last payment that we have to calculate here. So what's my interest expense? Well, previous balance was $620,721 times 8%. And again, I'm going to round because I don't like cents. How much of this payment is going to decrease the principal balance? 69,566 bucks. What then is my principal balance after the fourth uh, interest period? Well, previous balance minus my reduction in principal gives me 551,155 bucks, okay? That, my friends, is part A. Part B says prepare the entries for the loan and the first installment payment, not a problem. I can do that, okay? So, and this is gonna be B. So on December 31 of 2015, that's when I sign the, uh, the note. I'm getting cash of $800,000 and I'm getting or I owe that money, so I need to record the uh, mortgage payable. Okay. And then December 31st, 2016, I need to book the payment. What are the numbers? Guess what? We already have the numbers right here. Okay, so I'm going to debit interest expense for the uh, $64,000. I'm going to debit my mortgage payable because I'm decreasing my mortgage payable by how much? Uh, $55,224. Five, two, two, four. And obviously I'm paying cash. What's my cash payment? Well, 119,224 bucks. But I want to make sure that these add up because, you know, yeah, they do. Perfect. Okay. Part C says show the total mortgage liability that should be reported on the balance sheet as of December 31st, 2016. Well, where am I? My first payment was right here. I'm going to color that in yellow, okay? So we know that's what we're looking at. So what I need to do for C is say, what's my current, um, what's my current liabilities? Well, my current liability is going to be the current por portion of the mortgage payable. OK. 
Okay. How much am I going to pay? What's the current portion that I'm going to pay uh, in year two? Or how much do I have to pay in year two? Well, that's going to be the 59000 $642. Okay. What's the long term portion? Or long term liability? Well, that's easy. That is going to be the mortgage payable that's due in 2025. What's the dollar amount? Well, the dollar amount is $685,134. Where did I get that from? Well, that's the principal balance after the first payment. I'm going to owe, in the coming year, 2016, I'm going to owe $59,642. That's the amount that I owe within that year two, right? That's the current portion. The long-term portion is the... The outstanding balance, which is six eighty five one hundred thirty four dollars. Okay, so we just covered all your homework problems, right? Fifteen dash one a was in the previous problem. Fifteen dash three a and fifteen dash four a we addressed in this video. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free and text me. Um, I do want to make a note: um, those Tuesday night sessions, um, you do need to come. Uh, so I know that um, there's there's some students that, that missed the last two weeks. Please, please show up for those meetings. Um, uh, it's an opportunity for you to ask any questions so you're not out there floundering on your own. Um, also gives you, you know, an opportunity as well to, you know, create some kind of normalcy with, with everything that's going on. Um, and you get to talk to some of your, some of your classmates. So please make sure uh, that you guys do uh, log into those sessions. Um, within week 14, there's a list of who's in your session and what time you're supposed to log on. Again, those are Eastern Standard Time. So if you're out in California, take that into account. We're logging in, or you should log in 6 o'clock um, Ohio time, right? Not 6 o'clock California time. Okay, so that's all I got for you. Um, um, you're able to go ahead and work on your homework problems now. Again, if you get stuck... I'm only a text away, all right? So have a great, uh, great week, and uh, we'll see you on Tuesday.